Hello and welcome to Smallton. Well, I did a request from one of my subscribers to do a video of me repairing this Duke of Gloucester here. Now, as last time I uh, had my video uh, input, I showed that this cable was overheated. Now this was attached to these two here uh, that way round and the live and neutral was attached on here where you can see that I've cut it off. All it is is the TV suppressor and this was uh, I just deleted it as uh, I don't need it here. So what I've done is put power to the uh, the little link rail here and what this should do is tell me if this power coming up to the contacts here on the where you plug the uh, chip in or where it would normally plug in and at the moment I can't see anything nope. right so what I will do is plug is to plug one in here and test each side checking that there's power onto the rail first of all no, I've got a light on my DC power supply. It's on full. Oh, that's a thought. Is it on full pelt? Ah, yeah. Uh, no, it does help if I turn it on. <laughs> right, so we'll try. Now, I tested these before, and this is one where the motor goes. That's just on voltage, and there's nothing there, which is what I would expect. Now I push this in here and yes there's something showing but not, not a lot. So I test that there's voltage on there and yeah we've got 10 volts on there. So if we just turn this slightly and uh, see if I can find a way to uh, get voltage onto uh, it's very hard to do with uh, one-handed trying to hold the phone but you get the idea Let's see if I can do this using my other hand and get some voltage yep there's voltage showing across there. Now why is it not showing? Oh, sorry about this, it's not focusing very well. I mean, I don't have a holder or anything like that. This is only on a phone, so. Let's see. Yep, voltage. Right, so I'll now put this onto ohms and I'll test the motor. Right, but first of all, what I will do is disconnect the voltage and test that there's no short in the chassis. I happen to know that there is, so uh, as I've tested this earlier and uh, it does test as though there is a short. Now I was going to do a better video of me doing a step by step of removing the cable and everything but unfortunately the chip that I was going to install and program is faulty and has to go back to Hatton's. 
So, right, we've got one in. And got the other in. Okay, never mind. It will go. Under pain of death, it will go. Ah, strange that one, one connects and the other doesn't. Right, so there's no short there. So let's try the, the motor. Now this should give me a reading. Right, let's see. Should get a resistance reading if I can get this to work. I say it's very difficult doing it one handed. Right. So yeah, there is a reading there. So right, let's let me just turn this off for a second. And we'll see if the motor works. Uh, what I will do is put a DC power on to here and test that it, that it actually does run. So uh, what I will do is put a small piece of extra track on there just to make sure I don't it doesn't run off anywhere. Okay, just bear with me a moment. Right, well, focus, focus. Right, sorry about that. All right, I put the chip back in and just added a piece of track. And as soon as I put the chip in, it decided Oh, that does, does, does surprise me. It's actually running. Not very well. I don't think the uh, track's on prop. That's it. That's it. Does help if I put the tr the, go on the track properly. That's almost full power. As you can see, it's very reluctant to move. Now that is full power. So I think I can feel the motor being very reluctant to want to turn. It's off now. So we turn that to zero. And I'll put it back on this piece of track. Unfortunately, I'm not lucky like uh, my mate on Bluebell Central. I don't have an extra loop I can test this on. Yeah, got so. It's not the. Uh, it's triggered the uh, cutout on here. Anyway, right, that's what we've got to do. We've got we've got that working, sort of. Um, I think with a little bit of lube onto the motor and servicing the uh, the worm gear inside, maybe a little bit of silicon grease. Uh, I certainly wouldn't use anything else. That that would probably work. So that's all we've done to get this working. Now it didn't work before. There's no way it was going to move. So it's just definitely down to the uh, to this uh, this now the um, TV suppressor. Now I did test it, and it's definitely. Uh, no good. Um, it just doesn't work. Doesn't want to pass electric, and I said the cable. It does look like it's overheated. 
So that will disappear into the bin after taking these two cables off because I'm sure I can use those elsewhere because uh, I'm doing some lighting for one of my carriages. Right, well, uh, I've got nothing running at the moment. I've been doing other things. I found I had a little fault with my inner loop. Not, not, the, not the third one, the second one. That um, every time my engine went round just underneath the local, the uh, tunnel there, it would click. So after a little bit of investigation, I found it was a fault on the track. So I've replaced that and put a new piece of track on. And of course, with my track being in the cup in the cupboard for so long, uh, I need to run a the cleaner wagon over it a few times just to get that X section cleaned. Uh, my class 25 works perfectly and um, as does my Roco um, class 215 there and every and even the Sentinel is working quite well which it didn't for a while I don't know why so <laughs> hey ho there you go so what else have, we, have I been doing uh, the other thing I've been doing is looking at um, different designs for how I could improve Smalton uh, by placing the uh, industrial area where the housing is now and putting the housing where the industrial area is mainly because I think it may be able to give me a better running and I can certainly give it more space for the industrial area at the moment it's about maybe a third of the layout devoted to that whereas I can if I do a different layout I can probably get half the layout if not two thirds of the layout and reposition all the buildings so that um, I can have the town in this area um, with roads etc I can take out uh, I like the loop extension which is underneath that tunnel area and, I, and do away with that with that short straight uh, it would be probably give me a better running uh, it's just something I'm looking at at the moment uh, I've not made any final decisions on it and it's still something I'm looking at for possibly the future um, Smalton, the board for Smalton being the way it is, uh, it may be a bet good, better idea to um, have a new board. Well, I can't do that till next summer. Reason being, the place I would get the board from is uh, flattened. Thank you, Mr. Po uh, sorry, thank you, Mr. Shitcan, and we know who we're talking about. Uh, so excuse the language lads that's um, and laddesses uh, that's what uh, that's what I think anyway that's all from me I um, hope somebody's got something out of that um, as I say it's just a case of oil this up and grease this up which means me stripping it down and unfortunately I can't really do that on camera because I've only got two hands and I need one for the camera one for my phone, which is where what my camera's on. Uh, that's it. There's nothing else I can give you. Um, I'll be doing an update with a running session, and we'll probably have this running maybe next time I put a video on. Ah, no, sorry, I won't have it running next time I put a video on because I've got to wait for a new new um, chip to come. And I do have a spare, which is a Gage Master uh, Ruby decoder. But unfortunately, for this there, it's just two. For, or shall I say, for, for 
Duke of Gloucester, it's just too big. It won't fit. It's just massive. There's nowhere to fit it. It's overhanging here and if I trim this off, the chances are that the cables will get caught in the flywheel. And I'd have to hollow out this section at the back just to fit it. So uh, I'm getting a smaller decoder. Oh, well, I did buy a smaller decoder, but like I say, it's got to go back. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I shall also be trying to contact Hornby and get a new smoke deflector. As uh, unfortunately, it's uh, the one that's on it is toast. Uh, I just hope that they do spares. Probably not, but you never know. Uh, there is that highly unlikely. And if they don't, well, I shall take the other smoke deflector off and maybe get some etched nameplates to go on to this side there. Anyway, and I've just noticed something else that needs fixing. That uh, little handrail there needs fixing. Well, that's an easy job to do. I'll sort that later. So thanks for watching. I hope, like I say, I hope somebody's got something out of that. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. If you want me to go into more detail, I can do. Um, but there's nothing much really I can say about it. It seems to work. Uh, I know, like I said, I, I just can't physically take this apart any further and go down uh, and film it. So, just to recap, test that you've got power to your track, to your test track, power to the wheels and power coming up to your, to the underside of where your chip goes. Test the motor, see it's not shorting, uh, which can sometimes be the case. If it is, then you'll have to change your motor. If not, you should be okay. You could try putting power directly to the motor, which I have done on my dock shunter, uh, which will need attention because that that is doing something it shouldn't do. Uh, after I DC'd it, DCC'd it, because I do want that running on my layout. I've got some. I've got some work for it to do. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, just test all the cables independently with the voltmeter. I mean, these are cheap enough. For you're looking at probably. Um, I don't know what what they are in England now, because uh, uh, I bought this locally. Um, last time I bought one in England, it was about a tenner. Set of leads. Test between. Um, t test that you've got power on onto the wheel, onto the, onto the back of your chip holder. On ohms, test your test the resistance of your motor, and test. Um, I, on ohms that you're getting a reading between the cables. Now we're looking at the first two, if you look at the top of here yeah, sorry about that the first two on on the chip holder on, on the blanking chip are wheels to, to that connector the second two are motor so if you second put it test the cables between the the motor connectors and the, the second two you'll get a reading the reading is zero brilliant uh, across the motor you should get about 0 0.08 depending on the motor and what it is and 
there you go that's it very simple anyway time's clogging on now so I don't I don't like to keep these on very long and that's it so thanks for watching please like comment subscribe uh, if you leave a comment on um, want to subscribe uh, I will test I will probably resubscribe to you uh, subscriptions are free and if you put if you put the notification bell on you get notified when there's a new Smalton video so thanks for watching and all the very best here and take care uh, bye for now bye